Imagine I have this y equals to fx function and I ask you the question, is it continuous or not? Well, let's take this function out from the board like this and I'm asking you, is this function continuous or not? Well, it's a very simple answer. Imagine this is a metal conductor and I am applying electricity at this point and I ask you, will the electricity reach the other end? If yes, then it is continuous. If not, then it is not continuous. So in this case, you can obviously see since the end points of this conductor is connected to each other, so it is continuous. Now imagine I am bending the function in this manner. Okay, so this is a new function. I have changed the orientation. So now is it continuous? Well, it's obviously continuous still because the end point over here is connected with the end point at this tip. So however much I bend the function, it doesn't matter in whichever manner I bend it in an inverted manner, in a horizontal, in a straight manner, or whether I bend it another time like this, or whether I make it another bend like this, whatever I do with the function, it is still continuous because the end points are connected. The electricity can flow from one end to the other end and hence it is continuous. So that's the simple concept of continuity. Now in terms of mathematics, how am I supposed to understand whether the function is continuous at this edge points where I have little doubt that it may or may not be continuous. Although there is no scope of doubt, it's definitely continuous, but still questions are asked in this manner that at the edge points where the function is changing its direction, is it continuous or not? So the basic concept here, if I ask you if the function is it continuous at this point, at the point down here, what we will do in terms of mathematics, we will tend towards this point right very, very close at the edge from this side. And similarly, we'll uh, try to reach this vertex point from the left hand side, okay, from my left hand side, and we'll see whether it is uh, reaching the same point or not. Every time I'm approaching this vertex point, either from the right or from the left, if I end up at the same place every time, then the function is called continuous at that very point. Okay, the concept being that the electricity can flow from one point to the other end, then the function remains continuous. Now, what is the concept that I am approaching this vertex point? This concept is given by limit. That means if this point, if I say this point is A point, if limit, the X value is tending towards A, the function is tending towards this vertex. I'm tending towards this point from the right. I'm tending towards this point from the left. So X tending to A from the right, X tending to A from the left. If each time I reach this vertex point and my answer turns out to be same, then we say that the function is continuous. So that means if I have, let's say a function like this, and I ask you, is it continuous at this point? Let's say the value of X at this point is A. So what I'm going to do is I will approach A from the right hand side of A and I'll approach A from the left hand side of A. So when I'm approaching from the right hand side of A, that means the function values, every time the function is slowly, 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 slowly tending towards this point when I'm approaching from the right and when I'm approaching from the left, the function is also slowly, slowly, slowly approaching to the very same point. And if I exactly put the value x equals to a, the function is still being at that very point, the same value, then if all these three things are happening, approaching from the right and getting that value, approaching from the left, getting that value, taking the exact value a and still getting the same value, if these three things happen, then we can say the function is continuous at this particular point. Okay. So now in terms of limit, we'll be saying limit x tending to a plus. A plus means from the right hand side of A towards the point A. That's the concept of A plus. If this function is denoted by f of x, okay, if this function is denoted by f of x and 
if this value is equals to when I am approaching the limit from the negative side of A, that means from something less than A, I'm trying to approach A, which is represented by A minus. Okay, so if these two values are both equal and also that is further equal to the value when I put A in the function, that means when I put A in the function, and get the same value, which is this particular point, okay, I get the same value, then I'm going to say that the given function is continuous. So all these three things have to be equal. The concept being, if I apply electricity at this point, and if it flows right till the end, whatever end point I have, then the function is continuous in this in entire interval. If the electricity can flow, through the entire function without being disconnected okay so let's quickly take a look at this problem here the function is given by minus of mod of x minus 2 plus 1 so if i want to draw the figure okay the graphical representation of the function if i try to draw, draw it it's going to look something like this let me extend the y-axis it's going to look something like this because you know a mod function always have a v shape now the easy way to easy way to draw this function is the easiest way would be take the inside part of the mod okay whatever is there inside the mod take the inside part and set it equal to 0 okay so from that you'll get x equals to 2 that means this edge point is nothing but x equals to 2 okay that simple and if you have something added with the mod value okay something added with the mod value whatever be that value be that is going to give you this particular point okay the point on the y-axis all right and since there's a minus sign you can see there's a minus sign beside the mod so that's why the shape of the v sign is inverted if this was a positive sign, then your function would have looked like a perfect V. Okay, so since because of this minus, it's looking like an inverted V. Okay, so this is the shape of the function that we have. So now I'm asking you, is it continuous at the point x equals to 2? Well, just from the graph, you can understand a V shaped means it's connected at all the points. The electricity can flow and hence it is definitely continuous. But let's do this in a proper mathematical manner. So as I told you, I'm going to approach the point 2 from the right hand side, which is limit x tending to 2 plus and also from the left hand side, which is x tending to 2 minus and try to see whether we are getting the same answer or not. So that means I want to find out limit x tending to 2 plus for the given function also i want to find out limit x tending to 2 minus for the given function at the same time the exact value of the function when the value of x is 2 if all these three things are same then i can say that fx is continuous in the at the given point x equals to 2 okay so let's now forget about the graph from the graph we have understood yes it is continuous so you can make your conclusion directly from the graph but if I want to do the mathematics part of it, let me write this function in a way that will be easy for me to calculate the limit. Before that, I need to know how to break a mod function. So just take a look into this thing that I'm trying to draw here. Imagine I have a function which I'm representing it by a box. So mod of a box function is nothing but the box function, it's the box itself whenever the box value is greater than equal to 0 and minus of the box value whenever box is less than 0. So that simple it is. So now you can understand if inside the box I put x minus 2. Okay, so inside the box I have taken x minus 2. So it will be just simply the box that means x minus 2 whenever x minus 2 is greater than equal to 0 and minus of x minus 2 whenever x minus 2 is less than 0. So if you just remember this very concept with box, you can apply it on any box function. Okay. So now 
So this thing I can write as x greater than or equal to 2 and this thing I can write as x less than 2. So we have box of or sorry mod of x minus 2 is x minus 2 when x is greater than or equal to 2 and minus of x minus 2 when x is less than 2. So I'll just come over here and try to write my function. So I'll have fx equals to there is a minus sign from beforehand. So minus of the box thing, the box thing here is x minus 2 whenever x is greater than equal to 2, the thing which I wrote just now and minus of again another minus of x minus 2, basically I am trying to write this minus now. So this minus and the minus which is already there, so together it will become plus x minus 2. So there was a plus 1 which I missed over here, a plus 1 whenever x is less than 2, right? So this is the my fx function. So I can just simplify that one more line. So I can write fx equals to. So this would be minus of x and plus of 3. So minus x plus 3 when x is greater than or equal to 2. And this will be simply x minus 1 when x is less than 2. So this is my function in a more simplified manner from where I can directly find out these limits. Okay, so now limit x tending to 2 plus. 2 plus means, again, take a look at this value. Uh, this graph actually a plus means what? When I am approaching a from the right hand side of the function, right? So here, 2 plus means I'm approaching the value 2 from the right hand side of 2. Right hand side of 2 means greater than 2. I'm approaching 2 from values which are greater than 2. So greater than 2 is somewhere over here. So whenever I'm approaching 2 plus, that means I'm approaching along uh, the values of x which are greater than 2. So my cho choosable function is minus of x plus 3. So in this case, my function is minus of x plus 3. And I'll find that value a bit later. Okay, I'll just come down to this one now. When x tending to 2 minus, now what was 2 minus? Approaching 2 from the left hand side. That means from values which are less than 2, I'm trying to approach 2. So in this case, it corresponds to x less than 2. So 2 minus means I'm trying to approach 2 from values which are lesser than 2. So the choosable function in this case is x minus 1. So in place of the function, I'm putting x minus 1. So now if I try to calculate these values, the first one, if I put 2 in place of x, I'll have minus of 2 plus of 3. So together it will become 1. So that's my first limit value, which we are going to call as the right hand limit. Okay, so this is called the right hand limit because we are finding out 2 plus. Whenever you have plus, that's called a right hand limit. And again, here if I put 2 in place of x, so 2 minus 1, Again, I'll get 1. So this is called the left hand limit. So whenever you have a minus, so that we call as left hand limit. And now if in the function, I put the value 2 directly. Okay, so if I'm trying to put 2 in place of x, I need to put it as per my definition of this function, as per however defined it, I need to put it in place of the first one. Although I could have done it in place of the second one, that means this equality sign this equality sign we can remember give it in this place also or we can give it in this place also it does not matter you can give the equality sign in whichever one you want it will be all the same so i could have given the equality here also here also now since i have given the equality in the first expression so i will put x equals to 2 in the first expression so i will have minus of x that means minus of 2 plus 3 and that will give me again 1. So I can see all the values are 1. That means the concept of the function being continuous because the electricity can flow through the point x equals to 2 from the left hand side of 2 till the point 2 and afterwards as per this thing that we have written here. So this continuous flow of things that can happen on the function this is the concept of continuity. Now the question that I want to ask is,
the function if i draw it in this manner the one that i was explaining right at the starting of the video these edge points they are obviously the function is continuous at this edge points we have already proved that but is the function differentiable at these edge points that's something that we are going to answer in our next video thank you